What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another TV show review, and for this review it's going to be the season uh, finale for Eight Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so notably season 7. So in this season we have the team in an alternate timeline trying to get back home, and as they try to do that they're starting to jump through time, so now they have to repair the timelines, all the while trying to... Um, stave off a threat from the Chronicoms to destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. and take over the planet and ultimately the universe just to save their own home planet. Um, so there's a lot of things going on and a lot of it is hindered because they have a time machine that jumps through time but Simmons doesn't know quite how to fix it and there's no ex true explanation of why her memory is gone even though with the inhibitor firm for her to prevent her from remembering her memories and where uh, Fitz is hiding. So overall, the season was pretty good in what they were trying to do. Um, it felt like an extra number of episodes just to get through um, all the time jumps that they were going through. So it started to drag out about halfway through it, but it was generally well completed by the time they finished it because, as it turns out, Fitz was back in their original S.H.I.E.L.D. timeline trying to control events, and the reason why um, him and Simmons were separated and why Simmons had forgotten her memories was because um, they wanted to have the team figure out what to do and um, fix the universe with limited input from her and limited interference so they don't mess up the timeline any more than they need to and so that they can um, get back to or control the events that they need to in order to fix everything accordingly and um, ensure they get back safely. So overall it was done well. Um, I liked that they had to um, save um, Daisy's sister in the alternate timeline in order to get back and save the team and get back to their original timeline. I liked that they there was a redemptive arc where, for Daisy's and Cora's mom that um, I think New Horizon, New Dawn, I forget what the place was called, but that was good. I liked the inter um, having Sousa as the SSR agent show up and work with the team and have him be the man out of time, which was very reminiscent of Captain America. So that generally worked. Um, and I like that the biggest thing for Fitz and Simmons was that they have a daughter who would become the mom for... Um, what what's his name from the future or basically their grandson so i liked um that tie-in so they were protecting their child and essentially the season and show ended on a high note with um mac rebuilding shield and having a new and improved helicarrier at the end so we have that we have um may teaching at uh shield um facility. I think it was at Triskill Land, but I couldn't quite sh be sure. And then we have the rest of the team um, coming to terms with their new lives and basically protecting the planet. And then we have um, Daisy and Sousa acting, and uh, Daisy's sister acting as brand, basically brand ambassadors out in the universe to spread the word, of, or basically the good word about um, S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm guessing um discover potential and new threats in the universe and report back to um, headquarters if they find anything. Um, and it felt kind of like the space version of um, Arya's storyline at the end of Game of Thrones. So that was a pretty... Or when I saw that, it was a pretty quick comparison I was able to make. So there's not really much to say about the show. Um, they deviated from the Cine Marvel Cinematic Universe a long time ago, like so maybe season two or three, so... It was they basically been operating outside of the universe, and there's very little connection in the films back to the Shield. So um, basically, the superheroes have been doing their thing, and Shield has been doing their own thing. But I'm kind of curious to see how they take it from here to see if Shield is integrated um, back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or how it deals with Phase Four with the various other TV shows that are coming out, oh, and if anything happens there or if Shield. Basically just how all of those introductions go into place as far as um, things like Will, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, 
WandaVision and all of that, or if they're going to introduce S.H.I.E.L.D. back into the cinematic universe with some of the other films, and it's now Mac and S.H.I.E.L.D. has a new prerogative now that they're free of HYDRA and the Chronicons once and for all, or they have better threat detections from preventing outside influence, even covert or not, so that they can remain as pure as possible. So... That's really all there is for this particular review. I enjoyed it. It was a good conclusion. It kind of sucks that it's gone, and I kind of hoped over the course of the seasons that they had kept the intro or kept the tie-in with the films, and the films that kept a tie-in with the show, like they did early on with the premise of the show in season one. But in general, it was well done. I liked the character development, the um, idea that Shield was being whittled down slowly because of continued threats and outside forces but now they have a deeper understanding of the universe that they're in so overall it generally just works so that's all there is for this particular review it was a good show and a good season there was that big lull in the middle but season seven worked out well and there was good tie-ins with some of the early films like captain america the or notably captain america the first avenger so that's all there is for this review um, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01 for feedback, um, comments, updates, things like that. The website is PatelN01.com to um, get past episodes, um, support the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time.